Welcome to Astrogun 2016. Welcome to Asterix from scratch. My name is Alejandro Gutierrez. I'll be your trainer for the day, um, DCAP 1562. There you have my contact information in case you uh, have some questions or want to get in contact with me. Today we're going to talk about really basic uh, Asterix dial plan. What is Asterix? What is the architecture of Asterix? And we're going to get into interactive dial plan and some other advanced dial plan features. We're going to have uh, four sessions. This is the first one, Introduction to Asterix. Then uh, Asterix Architecture, installing Asterix, installing from source code, uh, repos, or uh, distribution. Then we are going to configure endpoints, and we will be using PJSIP, not ChanSIP. We're going to see IVRs and advanced dial plan with variables and conditional branching as well. This is a training that is uh, intended for people that has little to none experience with Asterisk configuration files. So if you already know everything about Asterisk configuration uh, files and Asterisk dial plan, this may seem basic for you, but of course you're welcome to stay as well. We'll have a few questions, uh, question and answer session at the end. And uh, if any moment you have any question that you need to answer right away, then raise your hand. Cool? Now, let's talk about what is Asterix. What can do and who is Digim? If you are in Asterix 2016, then you probably have a good idea of this uh, already. What is Asterix? Many people say that Asterix is a PBX. And yeah, it's uh, pretty commonly used as a PBX. But Asterix is really an open source communication platform. And I mentioned, I mentioned that it's open source. And what it means to be open source? It means that you can take that code, you can modify it, you can do as you wish. If you create a time machine with it, cool but you need to give that source code back to the community, or at least you should, right? Versus what is closed source, or what we call proprietary software, where one company is the only owner of that code. And if you want to customize that, it's probably not possible or very expensive. Asterix is developed by a community of developers. It's not just Digim, and we have some of those developers today at Astricon, so you might get a chance to meet with them. Asterix versions, it started in 1999. Marcus Spencer, and we're gonna talk about him a little bit in a while. And pretty much uh, every year after 2004, we have a new version. We just got Asterix 14 yesterday. Have anyone downloaded that already? All right. Today we're going to be talking mainly on Asterix 13. Asterix, just in case that you didn't read it before, it's an open source communication platform. So yes, it can be used as a PBX, but it can also be used as any application that is communication-wise. So you can see it on video applications, chat, messaging, server, uh, pretty much anything that you can think of. Actually, there's going to be um, a session called Beyond the PBX, in which uh, Carlos is going to be talking about different and unusual uh, places where you will find Asterix. Asterix is a communications platform. So by itself, when you take Asterix and download it, you don't have a PBX. Right? But you have the tools and you have the toolkits to build your communication solutions. But you have to build a rocket on top. And I know that this is lies come from uh, Dijun being in Huntsville, and Huntsville is the rocket city. They have NASA and everything, so that's where that picture comes from. Just like Apache is a web server, but you don't have a website, and you don't have web applications just by having Apache, Asterix, it's a communication platform, but whatever you want, you have to build it. 
and he has a language, and we'll see what is that syntax about and what are the configuration files in order to do that. And just, uh, this is a basic HTML code for Apache, but we also have that for Asterix, and it's going to sound like, right? So it's a basic extension 100, say, hello world. We'll see how we do that. Asterix has been uh, alive for over 17 years, but it's a very mature code as well. It is dual license. So we have the open source with GPL version two. Again, you can take it, do whatever you want, but you have to give back to the community. In case that you do want a license that you don't have to give back to the community, you also can buy a commercial OEM license from Digim. It is a, a global community. And that number, one million servers, I think it's a very low number. If we get to count uh, FreePBX, Asterix, uh, Elastix, Sorcom, whatever that uses Asterix inside, I think it's way over that number. But we can only count how many downloads we have from Digium repositories. And it's about 1,000 daily downloads. So Asterix is not just something that some people use. It's a global software, and it's very, uh, it's used globally. It is supported by the community, and the community has over 84,000 members, and again, over 1,000 developers and 10,000 developers over the years. That's a lot more than one company could hire to develop a software. But let's say that you do want support from Digium, you can also buy that. Digium offers support for Asterix, and you can buy 24-7 support, if that is what you want. A few years back, people, uh, they were worried about open source not being supported or not being good enough. We know that that's not the case anymore. There isn't pretty much any company that is not running open source some way in their, in their, inside their software. This is one example of how we can use Asterix. Here we have two Asterix servers, so let's say that you have two branches. And I think this is your case that we were talking this morning. So here we have voice over IP phones connected to Asterix. That's what Asterix does best, right? And then we also have connection to PSTN. That's the public switch telephone network. So uh, analog lines or T1, E1s, R2 modified in Mexico, right? And here we have another Asterix server with voice over IP phones and also just regular phones connected to an FXS port on Asterix or a gateway. And those two companies can communicate to each other using a SIP trunk Right? So using their internet, so they don't have to pay for long distance or regular telephony calls. You can also have a remote worker, this is using a voice over IP phone or their laptop to integrate with their, with their company and just call everyone as a regular extension, 100, 200. Asterix is often used as a toll bypass, again, they have a regular PBX. Probably they like it, they don't want to change it. It has sentimental value for them, whatever it is. They have their PBX and they have their analog phones. But they want to add the possibility to connect to a voice over IP provider or even interconnect those two branches together. They can definitely do that with asterisks. So here we will have an analog connection or, or a T1 connection to that PBX. And then over the internet, we can connect those two branches together and also to a, a voice of IP provider. Again, you don't have to pay for long distance calls. And even better, let's say that someone in this location wants to call a customer that is in this geographical location. They don't have to call using their lines. They can connect 
through their voice of IP trunk to the other branch and then use those lines to make a local call instead of a long distance or international. Asterix is often used as well as a feature server. Again, I don't know, Nortel, Panasonic, whatever PBX you, you want to name. Regular PBX, and it's nice. My father gave it to me, I like it, I don't want to change it, but I need to have IVRs. I need to have call queues. I need to have call recording. I need to do things, I need features that are not available in my traditional PBX. I can do that with asterisks. And asterisks is not only for small and medium businesses, it's often being seen in enterprise level. In this, you will probably have some Camellio servers or OpenSIP servers working as proxies, doing load balancing for that, for that enterprise. And then you have multiple asterisk servers working a feature. So you will have one server for IVR, one server for queues, one server for voicemail. And this is uh, pretty commonly seen in enterprise level. Again, every time you see this is because there is a session talking about that. Okay, so it's going to be a Camellia session uh, 29th at 10.45 a.m. And there's also an open SIP session, which I don't remember when it is, but make sure you check that out. Now, who is Digim? Well, Digim is a maintainer of Asterix. Digim is a company, is the Asterix company. And it all began in 1998, 99, when Marcus Spencer, he decided that, well, he wanted to create a company to give support to Linux systems. So he created Linux support systems. And the, the legend says that he needed a PBX. So instead of just buying a PBX, right, because it was too expensive, he decided to do it himself. So he created Asterix in 1999. Then in 2002, he created DGIM. And DGIM is right now the Asterix company. He has a two-fold mission. So it has an open source mission, with his, which is Asterix, and also a commercial side, of course. Right? We have Switchbox, and we have different products that relate to Asterix solutions. He has over two, 200 employees, um, headquarters in Huntsville, Alabama, and also Atlanta and San Diego. And actually, they have training partners all around the world. Again, business products and developer products. Let's talk about business solutions. Vium offers Switchbox, and Switchbox is the platform and the rocket. So it's the complete unified communication solutions. They offer that in Switchbox Cloud in the US. This is an example of the switchboard, right, and Switchbox. And actually, Steve Jacob is right next door doing sessions about Switchbox. And they also have the appliances if you want it on premises. So they will have different appliances to meet your requirements. So you want uh, 50 concurrent calls? That's fine. You want 200 concurrent calls? That's fine as well. It offers SIP trunking and applications for iOS or Android, and I believe even BlackBerry. So you can have that as well. For developers, we offer products that inter interact with Asterix. So Digium phones, uh, actually these are the new Digium phones, D60, D62, and D65. They also have the, the other ones, D40, 45, 50, and 70. These are digital gateways. So if you want to connect an E1, a T1, or a J1 to your Asterix server and you don't want to buy a card, or it's probably in a virtual machine, then you can have a gateway. They have one port, two ports, four and eight. Or is it? Yeah, probably eight. And telephony cards. So again, you want to connect regular telephony to your, to your server or you want to integrate analog phones, or a fax. Let's hope not. And um, you can buy analog cards with FXS or FXO ports, depending on what, what you need to connect. 
and you can also buy digital cards. In software, of course, Asterix and Respoke, which is basically WebRTC. So if you have an application that needs to have uh, communication, either video, voice, or, or message, or chat, then Respoke might be for you. Support, I mentioned that Digium offers support, not only the community. They have support for uh, business hour or even 24 seven support. And they, they can support Switchbox and Asterix as well. Training, we do training, I'm a trainer. So we have Asterix Fast Start, which is uh, on-site and the advanced training. This is three day course and this is five, day, five days. And this is the online training for the Asterix Essentials. And we have two certifications, the DCAA, which is the Asterix uh, Associate, and the DCAP, which is the Asterix Professional. Anyone here at DCAP? No? OK. We'll be having, uh, if you want to take the DCAP test, we'll, we'll, we will be doing that on Wednesday, so just in case. Any questions? Cool, now let's get to the fun part. Asterix architecture. We'll be talking about similarities between Asterix and Linux, and also the modular design of Asterix. We'll see what a channel is, and we will talk about the different interfaces that you can use to configure and use Asterix and also uh, the syntax of the configuration files. Asterix runs on Linux, right? And we have seen Asterix running pretty much in any distribution, any, any type of Linux system, and uh, OS, whatever, whatever you, you name it. But some of them are best supported. And when I say supported, I mean that you can find more information about it online. And there is a lot, of, a lot more people using Asterix probably in that distribution. So which one to use? Probably the ones, the two that have the most uh, support from the community are CentOS and Ubuntu. It doesn't mean that it, it will not run in any other distribution. It just means that these are the ones that you will find the most information and, and, and cases of Asterix working in that distribution. <coughs> Sorry. Asterix has a modular design, just like Linux. Asterix has a core, which I, I wouldn't call simple, but it is, it is Asterix core that takes care of just a few uh, functionalities, and then any other application or feature that you want comes from a module. So when you add that module to Asterix, you are adding that functionality. And those modules usually have a name of the type of module it is, so application, channel, resource, and then a name that basically tell us what, what they do. In this case, we are using the, we are adding the application dial so that we can actually dial something in Asterix, right? The core takes care of module management, so what modules will be loaded in this Asterix uh, installation, right? The reading the configuration files, timing and channel management and we'll see what different types of channels we, we have. That's all that the core does. Everything else, it's done by a module. How many modules we have? Well, let's see. A warning, yeah. Good. So by default, those are in user lib asterisk modules. 
And here we can see the different, the different modules that we have in Asterix. And you will notice, and I'll show you another way to see that. You notice that we have uh, resources, right, PJSIP. We also have functions, codecs, formats, applications. So each, each of these modules is adding one functionality or multiple functionalities to Asterix. You can also do that from the CLI, from the Asterix command line interface. So you could do if you do module show like SO, it's going to show basically all the modules that it has in user lib asterisk because they are all a share object. So that's that's why it's in match. And it's going to give you a brief description of what that module is in charge of. So Sorcery, nice. Multicast, uh, resources, RTP multicast, PJSIP, right? And let's just see. Forty-four modules for PJSIP instead of just one for ChanSIP, right? but that's better. If you want to change the directory, I mentioned that it's userlib asterisk modules. Uh, this is CentOS and userlib64 if you're running 64-bit version. Let's say that you want to change that. You don't like that directory. You, don't, you have a personal thing about it. So you can go to etc asterisk, not here, right? I do typos a lot, so excuse me for that. Remember that you can always use tab key. Probably all know that. <clears throat> nope. If you go to asterix.conf, and that is a configuration file, one of the configuration files for asterix, you will see that you have different options for changing the default directories. So you have the direct directories for AGIs, for a database, you know, for, for the libraries, for the modules. And you can also do a few things here. Um, one, one that I like, it's you can set the maximum calls or the maximum load for that asterisk system. So let's say that you have a server that you know it can take 100 concurrent calls. You can set that up here so that you know you're not going to try to do more than 100 concurrent calls. And this is the sample file. And it's a good, uh, a good read if you have the time. Did it change? No. Asterix modules are version dependent, meaning that if you have an Asterix system and you want to upgrade, your modules may or may not work with a new version, right? So it's a, it's a good idea to back up those modules and then do your new installation. If you don't do that, or if you, or if you add a module that didn't come with the uh, source code, you will see a warning like this. So for example, REST Digium Phone for DPMA uh, is not from this uh, source code. So warning, just make sure that it works. One thing about this design, one good thing about this design, is that you can select or choose which modules you will be, you will be loading. And you do that in modules.com. Here, you have a few options, and one of them is auto load yes, 
which is, which is basically saying, you know what, try to load everything that you find in user leap asterisk modules. But you can also specify one particular module that you do not want to load. So you do no load on that module. And that is a good idea if, let's say that you are 100% sure that you will never use X, right? So you can no load that channel driver, right? So you don't have open ports where you don't want to have. Let's, let's see an example. So right now, we have, let me go here. I'm going to dial extension 100 that we already, uh, right? So that's basic uh, hello world. That extension, it's answering the channel, wait for one second, and that is using the application playback to play back an audio file named hello world. We're good, right? Let's say that uh, from the console, we can also do module unload application playback, playback. So from the CLI, we can load or unload or reload modules. If we do that, unload it, and the, the application playback is no longer available. If we try to dial, Asterix will say no application playback for extension 100. Why? Well, because it doesn't have that, it doesn't have that module. Now we have it, okay? Now let's see it from the configuration file. Where are you, where are you? Here it is. I'm going to tell Asterix not to load that application playback module. So even if we try core show application playback, well, we, we don't have it, right? So from the modules.conf file, you can select which modules to load and which ones not to load. And that is a good security practice to not have everything just Keep with the ones that you need. Now let's load that again. We should be good to go. Hello, world. Cool. Any questions so far? He's asking if that configuration is available from a graphical interface. Uh, depends on what interface are you using, right? So, and it may or may not be available. The files that are using are the sample configuration files. And we will see that on the installation. If you do make samples, you will have something very similar to what I have. Not the 100, and, and, but you will have the configuration files. Some graphical interfaces will allow you to have access to those files. Yes, but uh, it might change a little. I know FreePBX uses additional.com or custom.com, right? So you may not be able to do the changes in the actual configuration file. You need to do that inside custom or inside whatever they have, right? So I don't know if I answered to your question, but you may or might not, depending on the graphical interface that you're using. And some products, they don't even allow you access to the configuration files. Yep, go ahead. I'm assuming this is correct, that I can create whatever modules I want to create and add to that? Or as part of 
part of the, the, the developers? So he's asking if you can create custom uh, modules. Uh, yes, you can, right? Uh, these are basically uh, on C, right? So, and you can actually customize the modules that you have already, okay? Uh, but there is a newer way to, if you want to do custom applications, you might want to use ARIs, and we want to talk Asterix RESTful interface. Okay. And we're going to talk about it in, in a bit. But yes, you can do your own module. Any other question? Where is it? Now, let's talk about another concept that is very, very important in Asterix, and it's a channel. What is a channel? It's a pathway in and out of Asterix. It allows you to interchange media with Asterix. And Asterix can handle multiple channel types. Uh, here are just some of them. SIP, the SIP protocol, the X, the inter-Asterix exchange protocol, Daddy, if you want to connect analog or digital cards to your system. And you will see that Asterix, in a regular uh, call, one endpoint to another endpoint, you will have one channel from one endpoint to Asterix, and then Asterix will create another channel to the second endpoint and bridge those two channels together. Let's see how that works. So from this phone, I'm going to call one of the other phones. Okay. I'm going to answer and make sure it's muted. Okay. If we do a course show channels, <coughs> you will see here that it has two active channels, one call. And that is because Asterix works as a back-to-back -back user agent. So he has one channel with one endpoint and creates another channel with the uh, other endpoint. <clears throat> and these are PJ SIP channels, one with endpoint 7001 and one with endpoint 7002, and is using, using the application dial. What if we call two Asterix? So let's say that we are checking our voicemail. If we do core show channels, or, or that. Login incorrect. Password. Okay. That's why I always use uh, the tab key, especially because, as you notice, English is not my first language, right? So I always. So we have one active channel, one call, because it's only one endpoint talking to asterisks. What if we had a conference? Oh, this one doesn't have permission for that. So we have two phones, uh, or two endpoints in that conference, and we have four active channels, right? So depending on the application that you're using, that is not always one channel per endpoint, right? And you have to be aware of this when you are uh, testing your server for how many concurrent channels it can take. Right? It's usually not how many users can you have in one system, but how many concurrent calls can you have? And how many of those calls are gonna be recorded? How many of those calls are gonna be in a conference? What codec are you using, right? So keep that in mind. One good thing about uh, buying an appliance like Switchbox is that those appliances are already tested to handle that many concurrent calls. So you know that it's, uh, it's going to work for that number of calls. So 
So what is a channel? The pathway in and out of asterisk. <clears throat> Asterix handles different channels, as we mentioned, EX, PJSIP, uh, R2, or different stuff, uh, Skinny, MGCP, whatever, whatever you want, but almost. And they will have the driver module, and it will be, the name will be very similar to this, right? So Chan, meaning that it's a channel driver, and then the name for that. Uh, channel, so SIP, the old Chan SIP, the newer uh, Chan SIP, uh, Chan PJ SIP, we had, which has 44 modules for PJ SIP, Daddy and X2, not X, X2. And every one of those modules will have its configuration file. And that configuration file, again, is going to be, by default, an ETC asterisk. So what do you think pjsip.conf is for? Well, for configuring pjsip endpoint, trunk, whatever. You need. In pjsip, everything is an endpoint, but chandaddy.conf, so, so that you can configure your channels on your analog or digital cards, right? <clears throat> These files by default are plain text files. And we'll see some of them today. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Yep, go ahead. What? You, do you want to connect web sockets or? Yeah, you can do that through uh, ARIs, uh, AMIs, or even AGIs. So there is uh, REST, a resource for that. Yeah, you had a question? Uh, could you address uh, what local channels are used for and if, uh, what they are? Yes, sure. Uh, she's asking about local channels. So local channels are used by asterisk, right, for certain uh, application. So one thing that you can have a local channel, and I don't have an example right now, but if you jump from the dial plan to another point on, in the dial plan, right, you can have a, a local channel for that. So it's a channel in asterisk to asterisk itself. So it's useful for uh, subroutines jumping from one place to the dial plan to the other. Right? That's where you will see it the most, right? And I'll see if I can get an example on the, on the break and if you're here next session, I'll, I'll have something running so that you'll see it, okay? How can you configure asterisks and how can you interact with asterisks? Well, there are different ways you can do that. The configuration files, that is what we are going to see here today. So ETC asterisks, configuration files. You can also do that from the CLI, from the command line interface. So here, right? We can actually do configuration here. We can add members to the queue, remove members to, the, to a queue. We can do a lot of things from the CLI. But there are other ways to interact with asterisk. <clears throat> One of them is AGI, so the asterisk gateway interface. So now you're ready you build your time machine, right? You have a software that it's able to do time travel. Cool, and you did that in whatever language you are most comfortable with. Now, you want your asterisk server to interact with that, so that when you pick up your phone and you dial extension 100, uh, select the date in which you want to travel. You enter the date and you travel, right? Asterisk is not doing the time travel, is your software, but Asterix is working as an interface to that software. And just like any interface, it works as a, a standard input and a standard output. You can get information to that software, you can get information from that software as well. Let me show you an example here. <clears throat> so, 
So I took this example from the uh, Asterix Advanced Training. So we have an AGI and that is going to uh, post a message on Twitter, on a Twitter account that, that we manage. From the dial plan, what we have is this, somewhere, somewhere here, right? From the dial plan, we have an extension, 9,000 here, which is using the application NoWAP, and we'll see what that is, but it's basically just showing a message on the command line interface. It's setting a variable name status to Astricon 2016, and then it's using the application AGI to execute this Python script. And that script is going to post that message on Twitter. And if it works, if we got a success, then it's going to play back, uh, congratulations, you have configured or something wrong. Uh, let's see if that works. Here we have our Twitter account. We don't have that many followers. Uh, AGI lab test. And if I dial 9,000, 9, that message should pop up here. Well, it's not going to just show. I have to refresh. Oh, this is in Spanish. Felicidades. Cool. So, there we go. So, AGIs are very, very powerful to interact with any software that we develop. And the good thing about it is that it doesn't have to be a particular programming language. So if you, if you are good in PHP or Java or C or Python, you will find a library for that, or most likely you will. Let me take that out. We also have AMIs, so Asterix Manager Interface. And the users for that are configured in a file named manager.conf. This allows a software to connect to Asterix, get information from Asterix based on events. So when someone picks up the phone, that generates an event. When someone creates a channel, that generates an event. And our software can act according to that. So we have events and we have actions. Have any of you seen the uh, flash operator panel? I, I bet you all have, right? The flash operator panel uses AMIs. It has a connection to Asterix using the manager interface. It gets events from Asterix so that when we dial one extension, right? So the interface changes. It, it, it will be red if they are busy. And depending on what type of permissions you have for that user, they could have the ability to create channels. So you could even drag and drop uh, one extension to another and create a channel. So that's the manager interface. Usually, manager interface are permanent connections. Like you have that software connected to Asterix and getting events all the time. AGIs are more per channel. So you dial something and execute that AGI. Any questions so far? Now, from Asterix 12, 12 whoop, we have a new way of interacting with Asterix, and a more powerful way is the Asterix RESTful interface, the ARIs. And this gives you control of the very primitive of the channel and the media. So instead of just telling Asterix when to execute an application or when to do something that it already does, why don't we create our own applications? So let's do our own applications. I want to create my own playback application because I don't like the one that Asterix has. 
or I need something different. Let me show you an example of that. Let me see if it's running. Nope. So I created a, an ARI example. It's a Python uh, file. And it's basically a custom playback application. So we will have the ability to stop a playback or pause or go forward or backwards or reverse on that playback. It is running right now, and we are going to see the event coming up on the screen. That, that was the volume, Jess. Congratulations. So we're doing a normal playback right now. We want to pause. We want to resume that. And to pause again. Right? We want to go back a few seconds. Right? right? We're going back five seconds or forward. So notice how we are not just using the regular Asterix applications. Uh, I didn't mean regular in a bad way. But we are creating an, our own playback application to which we have control of the channel, we have control of the media, and how it interacts with the channel and the endpoint. So ARIs, very, very powerful new interface. Let me take this away. Uh, that's tomorrow, right? 28th. Going ARIs is going to be a session ARIs using uh, the Go uh, language. So make sure you check that out as well. That will probably be the, the way that you will be doing applications so far. He's uh, asking about shared line appearances. Uh, I'm not sure about Asterix 13. I know it's one of the uh, new features in Asterix 14 to share uh, better the to better share the the status and appearance of, of endpoints with other softwares. Because of the presence? They really wanted SLA. Um, they wanted to do it as a big box or a big phone MP. Right. Just like that, and not do a transfer. And, and they wouldn't go with parking lots and BLF, right? Too complicated. When there's an entire parking lot in the driveway. Right. Uh, usually, you can go around with that uh, using parking lot and BLF. Like, you will have BLF configured for. Uh, parking position, so they will be red or green uh, uh, whenever they are busy or not. Usually you might get around with that. Uh, I know Asterix 14 has a new feature for sharing uh, line appearance. I'm not 100% sure of what are you able to do or not, but I can get that out for you. Any questions about these interfaces? Now, let's talk a little bit about configuration files. We have mentioned a few times that they are in, by default, an ETC asterisk. They have a name, which usually tells a lot of, about what that file is doing. So extensions.com for dial plan, uh, PJSIP, Chan Daddy, voicemail, queues. They all have a section heading between a square brackets. Depending on the file that you're working, it might mean something different. So if it is extensions, that might be a context, right? But they all have that format. Inside those sections, you will have keys and values. And again, those are depending on the file that you're working with. But this will be, for example, 
password equal my password, right? Username equals username. That is the format that you follow. <clears throat> you can comment lines with the uh, semicolon. We don't use the pound because pound is a DTMF digit, right? And if you want to do multiple line comments, you will do this. So pound, dash, dash, and then dash, dash. I mean, not pound. Semicolon, dash, dash, and then. I'm not a fan of doing multiple line comments, just because sometimes you comment a whole section out, and then you forget about it and write something in the middle, and it's not working, and you don't know why. But that's just me. I mean, I prefer doing line comments, even if I have to do one line at a time or whatever. So what is the default di uh, directory for asterisk modules? You can say that. User lib asterisk modules, right? And we have mentioned that asterisk has a core that takes care of just a few functionalities, and then every module adds that application. What if we want to select which ones we uh, load and which ones we don't. We can use the modules.conf file, right, to load or unload. We can also uh, do that from the CLI. How we can do that? So module unload, module load, application playback, right? What is a channel? What is a channel? A pathway in, a, in and out of asterisk, right? So a connection in and out of asterisk where we can uh, send or receive media. <clears throat> what is the default directory for asterisk configuration files? ETC asterisk, right? There is one file where we, where we can change those default directories. Which one is it? Asterix.conf, right? And we can also set a few options for uh, the behavior of Asterix. Cool. Before we get to your questions, let's do this. Uh, everyone get your cell phones, iPad, beeper, whatever you have, and um, connect to Asterix from scratch. Password is Asterix. And then go to asterixsurvey.com. Let's just hope you don't crash uh, my web server. And please don't try to do it. And you will see a few uh, questions that I would like you to answer. <clears throat> 